I started when traditional was what there was. Uh, I, Ralph Page was, was a traditional caller in, in the purest sense, and I, I didn't know there was such a thing as, as modern until I got to New Haven and encountered Al Brundage. And Al had just come back from his, I think, his only visit to Lloyd Shaw in 1949. And he was starting what was a new experience for me, a club, a square dance club, the Connecticut club in, in his area in southern Connecticut. And it was a different kind of dancing. And that's the first I encountered what has become modern square dancing. Uh, I have always interpreted the difference between modern and traditional as being we improvise, we in modern improvise the choreography as we call it. And that wasn't strictly true for a very long time. I was going to say, when, when you started with Al in 1949, was he improvising the calling? No. And, so, and, so, what so, was it, it? so it's not really improvising, it's just that it was changed as it was called. Okay, so and you, you, you came to a, a kind of dance that was different from what you knew. So what, what it, was it? It introduced some new terms. Um, the the Alamandar was a, a new idea that wasn't done in anything I'd ever seen before. Um, the I think the Alamo style balance was introduced in, in that same time frame. Uh, square through didn't exist. There were... There weren't a whole lot of different things, but there were some new terms uh, that, and and the way they were used was was different, in ways that I I'm not really sure of now. Uh, I I've talked with Al Brundage about uh, when did we start changing the call as it was being danced, and he and I both agreed it was right after he came back from Lloyd Shaw. Before that, he was doing set routines, which repeated for the same people, uh, we started varying those. As a dancer, I was a young, you know, teenage dancer, and we would start with the visiting couple dance, for instance, uh, when he was calling first couple go to the number two. If I was number three, I'd go over to number four without any bother to call. You know, he didn't tell me to do that, but we'd do that just to keep ourselves busy. And, and I think it caught on, and, and I, I called Al a couple of years ago and asked him, was that about when it started as he remembered it? And he said, yeah, that's, that's where it began, and we started uh, seeing to it that more people were busy more of the time. And very soon after that, all that I did in the Army at the service clubs was traditional, you know, calling set routines. Uh, we learned a routine and, and used it. So it wasn't there, but we started adding new routines and new varieties of things. Uh, the first big call change was square through, and which came, which came in the 80, 56. Uh, and that was there, but before that, in, in Sets and Order magazine, there were uh, calls, new ways of doing the same old things. Uh, long sequences, uh, 32 beats is a routine, but then the the routine would go on beyond 32 beats of the whole dance. The whole series of dance steps became a named call, and, and in sets and order they were published with names. Every dance that was published had a had a name. Uh, so it was a name for a routine. It was a name for a routine. And how is that different from traditional? Uh, I don't know, uh, really. The routines were, were usually four couple actions. We did a lot of dive through, pass through, split two and around one. The, the standard traditional route was what we now call goalpost figures, where you'd have the head couples go down the middle and separate around, come into the center and do something, go through the other sides around and come down the center and do something. Uh, that goalpost action was pretty standard. And we didn't really have any way 
until the mid-50s of getting people to work across the center, uh, the route that we now that we know as as eight chain through, did that. But in order to stop a sec, explain eight chain through. Eight chain through. If you have the head couples step forward and face their corner, you now have uh, uh, two couples facing on one side, two couples facing on the other side. You then give a right hand and effectively do a grand right and left along that route. And all eight hands brings you back to where you started. As you get to the outside, you do a courtesy turn and come back across the center. And that eight hands is a full eight chain through setup. And that was a call that turned into a, you know, face the corner and do an eight chain through. We then discovered we could do eight chain three and eight chain four, but basic call is eight chain through. That pattern was an across the center thing. That whole across the center action came out of a dance created by Holman Hudspeth who I think was in the upper Midwest. And the trick was, how do you get people to face the corner, uh, to face the outsides? Well, he came up with it. We did box the net. Box the net was a, uh, a standard call. And so you could box the net, and he said, head couples do a half sachet, box the net, and face the sides. And that set up that eight chain through. The name of the dance was Chicken Plucker. Um, and from there, you did a right and left through with the outside couple. Then you did a dive through, pass through, and you did something on the other side. And we soon discovered that we could change what we did on each side. And then dive through and pass through, go to the back to the original side. And that wasn't your corner because you had done it across the square. So you do something over there, and then you dive through, pass through. And you could either call an Alaman left or do another routine. And that back and forth across that chicken plucker routine became a standard choreographic pattern for a decade. 